Fei Pinying Jiang. Chapter 32 King Zilane Young Master Young Master, the woman stared at Qi Yunruo, sobbing to the point where she couldn't speak. A few guards shared a look. Qi Yunruo softly said, Big Sister Yuan Yuan. It's you, Big Sister Yuan Yuan. The door to the quarters stood halfway open. Li Chen, who was sitting down within, watched as Qi Yunruo went to that woman's side, dropping to a half kneel, throwing his arms around her. Qi Yunruo rested his head on her shoulder in a natural manner. He gritted his teeth but due to his shaking, the sound of teeth clattering could be heard. Big sister Yuan Yuan, it's been so many years. Have you been here all this time? The woman returned his embrace. She recalled when she had held the seven-year-old child who had just lost his mother many years ago. The nine years that had been lost since then seemed far away. The woman did not have a surname. After she had left the capital, she took the one of her previous master. After she had taken up permanent residence in Yushu Pass, she called herself Shui Yuan Yuan. Shui Yuan Yuan had still been a maiden when she left Qi Yunruo's side. Now she was a young wife with three children. She reached out and helped support the youth to his feet and wiped his tears clean. Gently, she said, the gods have eyes. They let me encounter young master again. Young master should not cry. That we have met is a good thing. At the door, Li Chen called for the guards. Two tall and largely built men helped support the two people into the house. Somewhat in a panic, Qi Yunruo shot a glance at Li Chen. Li Chen returned his gaze and smiled reassuringly. Bring her in, little Qi. At this moment, Several thoughts flew through Shui Yuan Yuan's mind as she looked at Qi Yunruo. Why was young master here? Wasn't that his highness, Prince Chun, inside? Could it be? Her heart froze. Qi Yunruo led Shui Yuan Yuan by the hand inside the house. Li Chen was already fully dressed and sat on a chair. Shui Yuan Yuan, without the slightest hint of fear, performed the full ceremony of greeting in a generous manner. Martial official's wife Shui Yuan Yuan greets Prince Chun. Long life Prince Chun. Li Chen studied her. From her act of ceremony and posture, he was certain she came from the capital. He glanced at Qi Yunruo, whose eyes were red. This mistress is a wife of a military family. That is correct, said Shui Yuan Yuan. This one's husband is a Douwei stationed in Yushu Pass. A military official of the sixth rank. A slight smile spread across Li Chen's lips. Apologies for the lack of manners, but which Douwei is that? This one's husband is named Dong Cheng. Shocked, Qi Yunruo said, Is that brother A Cheng? Big sister Yuan Yuan, you married brother A Cheng. Shui Yuan Yuan flashed a smile his way. Then she turned to Li Chen, her gaze one of scrutiny. Li Chen said to Qi Yunruo, you two can have a good chat here. I will step out. Qi Yunruo looked at him and blurted, Your Highness, you must not go outside. Your wounds have yet to heal and you haven't had breakfast. Yet Li Chen only smiled once more. He shook his head. I'm going to see Chu Qing. It's just a few steps away. After taking a nap I don't feel like the injuries are too serious anymore so don't be so worried. Qi Yunruo furrowed his brows. But Li Chen patted his shoulder, before passing by him as he left. After he had stepped through the door, Shui Yuan Yuan no longer hid her concerns. Young master, the border isn't like the capital. There are many dangers here. For what reason is your honored self by Prince Chun's side? Qi Yunruo did not comment on that. Instead, he smiled. Did you really get married to Brother A. Cheng? What happened back then? Brother A. Cheng is now a military officer with men under his command. Shui Yuan Yuan let go of her worries. On her face was a smile once again. When the lady had first left this world, the people from Count Ziang's estate sold me to the Northwest as a slave. Brother A. Cheng was not born a slave, and was beaten before he was thrown out. 
It also never crossed my mind that after his injuries healed, he would bring his life savings to find me. After that, he secretly took me away, rushing to the pass. And he fell into an argument with the guards at Yusha Pass gates. Luckily, General Sita had just been patrolling the area, and saw that Brother A. Chang was courageous and upright. He took him in as a member of his personal squad. Later on, Brother A. Chang received military merit and requested a favor. To bring me to Suzhou to remove my slave status, and then marry me. Shui Yuan Yuan held back tears. She wiped her eyes with a handkerchief. My eldest son is six years old. The second is four. I'm still nursing my eldest daughter. These years, I've had what I should have and done what I should do as a woman. The only thing I was concerned about was you. Young master, I've long since noticed that Count Ziang was not a good man to marry. Unfortunately, the lady did not believe me. She did not leave herself a contingency plan. Afterward, I was very worried. Count Ziang had many children and women. How would he treat you well? Then I finally got to see you today. Shui Yuan Yuan was already the wife of a military official. But she still deliberately went to help out at the army clinic. Due to this, the scenario in which she was here to bring Prince Chun his medicine could exist. She watched Chi Yunruo with a tender and loving gaze. Thought of the rumors that had recently reached her ears. And her heart fell into a greater sense of unease. Chi Yunruo looked at the direction of the door. He said softly, His Highness treats me well. I am happy by his side. Big sister Yuan Yuan does not need to worry about me. Let's wait until brother A Cheng is free and give him a visit. I also want to meet your children. Shui Yuan Yuan's heart trembled. She rushed to say, I live in the pass and don't know much about the news of the capital. But last year, didn't Count Ziang's eldest miss marry into Prince Chun's estate? I was her dowry escort. Chi Yunruo lowered his head. Swine. Shui Yuan Yuan gritted her teeth. Chi Suxiao. He actually has the face to do such a thing. How could he treat the lady like this? Back then, he used so many schemes to win her heart. In those years, the lady had many suitors and admirers. And even Shui Yuan Yuan paused. Turned to look at Chi Yunruo. Young master, why didn't I meet you earlier? Whether I come with you to the capital, or you stay with me at the pass as we live out our days, both are better than your current situation. Chi Yunruo hugged her. Reassuringly, he said, I truly like it. Believe me. Don't be angry or so excited, okay? Waiting until Shui Yuan Yuan was no longer as agitated, Chi Yunruo said in a soft voice, You don't know this, but by His Highness' side, it is I who feels weak and useless. And I also make a lot of trouble for him. Shui Yuan Yuan thought back to yesterday, when the prince had won the battle in Yoshu Pass, complicated emotions rising in her heart. Li Chen did not return while they were talking. Worried, Chi Yunruo could not keep his thoughts from Li Chen's wounds as his attention strayed from their conversation. Shui Yuan Yuan rose to her feet to leave. Brother A Cheng is on duty today. He will return at night. At that time, I will come to pick you up. There's only an old female servant watching the children right now, so I'm a bit worried. Chi Yunruo sent her off, all the way to the outskirts of the encampment. He watched as her figure shrank into the distance before finally averting his gaze. As he turned around, he found Li Chen slowly coming his way. Surprised, Chi Yunruo said, Your Highness, you have returned. A smile spread across Li Chen's lips as he nodded. He waved. Chi Yunruo broke into a jog to his side. Has your honored self eaten yet? Where did you go that it had taken so long? Li Chen did not comment on that. Rather, he asked, are you hungry? Chi Yunruo was put in a daze. Then he recalled he had not eaten yet. Holding his hand, Li Chen led him back to their quarters. Chi Yunruo noticed some bowls of kanji and biscuits atop their table. As Chi Yunruo ate, Li Chen watched, 
all the way until the former had finished his meal. He did not hurry to ask him what he and the woman had spoken about. Chi Yunruo looked at him, a shade of yearning in his eyes. Big sister Yuan Yuan was my mother's maid servant. She's seven to eight years older than me and has taken care of me when I was younger. Brother A Cheng was hired to work for us. He had always liked Big Sister Yuan Yuan but Big Sister Yuan Yuan felt her identity was too humble and was not suitable as a match for Brother A Cheng. Li Chen listened to him speak without a word. Qi Yunruo's tone was somewhat grieved and heartbroken. I had only been seven when I was brought to Count Xiang's estate. I couldn't do anything. I knew that they had sold Big Sister Yuan Yuan somewhere but I had no way of finding her. After so many years, I thought I would never see her again. He had not thought about his mother for a long time. However, because of meeting Shui Yuan Yuan again, he found himself seemingly thrust into the past. His mother was the most beautiful woman he had ever seen. She was gentle and quite elegant. Not one to get excited easily or one to take one's time. A sense of mourning was present in the middle of her brow. Her smiles were shallow and light. In the long period that she waited for his father, her life burned out like a candle's flame at the tender age of twenty-six. Chi Yunruo lifted his head. Your Highness, I've talked to big sister Yuan Yuan that tonight, I will go over to see brother A Cheng and their three children. Li Chen nodded. Okay. A while later, Chi Yunruo quickly said, Your Highness, I forgot, but are your wounds really healing? Have your wounds reopened? Is the pain in your chest hard to endure? I've said it before that I'm fine, said Li Chen helplessly. Chi Yunruo pulled Li Chen to the bed and made him lie down. Has your honored self taken the medicinal kanji this morning? I had it at Chu Ching's. A wave of relief finally washed over Qi Yunruo. Li Chen gazed at Qi Yunruo, heart somewhat soft. Under the deliberate indifference and neglect of Count Ziang's estate, little Qi did not get to have much of an education, nor did he ever have the chance to practice martial arts. However, he was very serious with what he did. At the prince estate, without receiving any benefit, he would diligently copy the gift lists sent by others in Ink Lotus Courtyard and do those difficult and troublesome aspects of managing the estate. After they started traveling with the army, he started to sleep lightly, once Li Chen made a bit of movement, little Chi would rouse. The water he fetched would be warm. When Li Chen forgot the time, little Chi would inform him of it and bring his meal. Little Chi was very attentive and thoughtful as well as very intelligent. Today, as he had felt the gaze of the Shui clan woman on himself, Li Chen wondered whether keeping little Qi by his side and taking care of him would be akin to breaking his wings. If he gave him a more spacious sky, would he fly to a farther place? Li Chen thought of Ji Huan. Ji Huan had a goal. And now he obtained what he desired and went off on his own path. But little Qi was different. He lived in a small environment. Fifteen years old was an age when one was ignorant of the world. After he had matured, he would understand the road before him was littered with hardship and obstacles. At that time, would he resent Li Chen for it? Back then, little Chi did not have the opportunity to spread his wings. But if he gave him one, he had an idea of where his decision lay. At night, Shui Yuan Yuan came to pick up Chi Yunruo. Li Chen made sure to not be around. Once Chi Yunruo left the encampment, he saw a familiar figure. His eyes shone. Excitedly, he yelled, Brother A Cheng. Dong Cheng took in the sight of him from top to bottom. Full of joy, he said, young master has grown up. Those words caused Qi Yunruo some embarrassment. Brother A Cheng, big sis Yuan Yuan, you don't have to call me young master anymore. Just calling me by my name is fine. Shui Yuan Yuan's gentle gaze fell upon him. A smile tugging on her lips as she nodded. Dong Cheng already possessed the identity of an official. Once he had enlisted into the military, he was given his own house and three to four servants to attend to him. His two sons looked very energetic. An old female servant carried their young daughter to greet them, 
before carrying her back into her chamber. On top of the table sat two to three hot dishes, steam still rising. Qi Yunruo's heart warmed. Dong Cheng and Shui Yuan Yuan gazed at him gently once more. His nose started to sting, the urge to cry strong, and Dong Cheng's second son stared at him with a curious gaze. Qi Yunruo stroked his hair. He was already someone's senior. He could not show weakness. Dong Cheng poured a cup of wine for him. His wife had informed him of some details, which he found hard to believe. But he also could not think of a way to have Qi Yunruo leave Prince Chun's side. I'm pretty free in the house and have spoken with Sir Lu of the army clinic, Shui Yuan Yuan said gently. That whenever there is a need, I will go and assist them. General Si has helped my husband and myself immensely. Brother A Cheng is guarding the pass and I cannot, as a wife of a military official, spend my days idly. After I returned home today, I've been thinking a lot. Thankfully I came to assist the army clinic today. If I weren't able to meet you today, I would not have the chance to see you again in this life. Chi Yunruo smiled. He lifted his wine cup and took a small sip. It was extremely spicy the moment his tongue touched it. A light sigh escaped his lips. I know that you two are worried about me. But the situation is not as you think. His Highness has never forced me. I followed him to the pass through my own volition. Cold as ice, Shui Yuan Yuan said, but Count Ziang truly isn't human. That year when the lady had passed away, she left behind many treasures. The wealth could last the lady her whole life and three lives after. They sold me and threw out Brother A. Cheng. But as I was on the road to the northwest, I consoled myself by thinking that once the family split and you had your own branch, you wouldn't need a cent from them. Count Ziang actually has the face to treat an excellent son as a dowry escort for his legitimate daughter. Qi Yunruo did not clearly hear Shui Yuan Yuan's last words. Dazed, he asked, my mother left behind many treasures for me. Shui Yuan Yuan nodded in a solemn manner. After the lady left Xia House, she brought with her money and jewelry, jadeite and jewels, all worth millions of gold. The lady never relied on Qi Suxiao for a cent. She purchased two stores, one that managed rice and noodles, and one that managed clothes, bolts of cloth, and jewelry. And they were in the most bustling area of the capital. If you said she earned 190 kilograms of gold a day, it would not be a stretch. Qi Yunruo sat there, frozen. Memories of his life on King Z Lane revealed themselves before him. His mother always wore clothes that were exquisite and pleasant to the eye. She once had on a gold dangling hair ornament showcasing a great Argus holding nine strands of pearls in its mouth. Each pearl was round and bright. As his mother walked, the strands of pearls would shake with each step. Hanging by her waist was a jade medallion, ringing upon every step she took. His mother loved to lie on a chaise lounge as she read. Behind her stood a screen divider. The skill of its embroidery peerless. The things Qi Yunruo had eaten and drunk those years were the best. Mother was not cheap, and used the most superior materials to make his clothes. If he couldn't win against the older children in a fight, and came home crying, mother would give him a bead of gold. So that he could use said bead to knock a bird off a tree with his slingshot. All of these memories flashed before his eyes. He then recalled when he had first entered Count Ziang's estate. He was put in a small and desolate courtyard in the corner of the estate. Every season he would only receive two sets of new clothes, and they would be made from cotton. During the coldest part of winter, he would wrap himself tightly in a cotton blanket while shivering in bed. He had thought his mother's money belonged to Count Ziang. Count Ziang had taken all of it. But now he finally knew that wasn't the case. His mother had left behind so much wealth for him. Where did it all go? Suddenly, he recalled Qi Nikon's wedding day. They had told Qi Yunruo to manage the dowry list. One golden Argus holding pearls dangling hair ornament, one jade inlaid butterfly love flower dangling hair ornament, one white crystal mutton peony dangling hair ornament, one gold inlaid five-colored jewel jadeite specks long hairpin. 
one white jade hundred pearl jade medallion, one red jade gold and pearl jade medallion. One set of sandalwood Sazao embroidered four season screen dividers. Why did mother's things become part of Chi Nikon's dowry? As Chi Yunruo left the Dong residence, Shui Yuan Yuan followed him out, her heart full of worry. Chi Yunruo walked away in a daze. Once he had lifted his head, he saw a familiar figure in the distance. The moon had already come out. Li Chen held a lantern, smiling lightly at him. Shui Yuan Yuan stopped in her tracks. Chi Yunruo approached him. Then Li Chen said to Shui Yuan Yuan, Because you have not met each other for a while, I assumed there would be alcohol. Little Chi can't hold his liquor. I was afraid he'd get lost so I came to escort him back. Shui Yuan Yuan curtsied, her expression neutral. Military official's wife thanks your highness on behalf of young master. Not caring that her tone was impolite, Li Chen turned to Qi Yunruo. How are you? Your expression doesn't look good. Qi Yunruo forced a smile. I have a slight headache after drinking some wine. Li Chen did not press him on that matter. He once again turned to Shui Yuan Yuan. The mistress need not send little Qi off any further. We will leave now. Then he supported Qi Yunruo in turning around and leaving. Bit by bit, Qi Yunruo's mind went blank. After they had returned to the house Li Chen and he were staying in and Li Chen had lit the lights, he finally came back to his senses. Li Chen carried him to the bed. He sat at the bedside and stroked his cheek. What did you people talk about? Qi Yunruo turned his body to look at him. Qi Nikan's face, Count Ziang's face, and the Countess' face kept appearing and cycling through his mind. Until finally, the scene of Li Chen and Chi Nikan's wedding day made its appearance before his eyes. He himself propped the window up. Wearing the red robes of a groom, the prince noticed his gaze. And he looked towards his way. End chapter Fei Pinying Jiang Chapter 33 Rumors All Around Chi Yunruo fell into his memories of his time at the Dong family's residence. Back then, Shui Yuan Yuan had noticed his strange expression. She said softly, Did Qi Suxiao not return those things to you? Qi Yunruo rose to his feet. I'll be leaving first. There was a yellow tinge to his face. Shui Yuan Yuan's worried gaze fell upon him. She was starting to regret saying what she had. But when she thought of her deceased master, her words were ruthless. The people of Count Ziang's estate are too excessive. Master never entered through their doors as a concubine. What gave them the right to take away all her dowry? Isn't Chi Suxiao someone who cared about face the most? Back then, after the imperial censorate censured him, he distanced himself from Master. I will definitely show everyone this hypocritical official's real face. By the candlelight, Chi Yunruo fell deeper into his thoughts. The room had been vacant for a few days, but because someone cleaned it every day, it wasn't dusty. Li Chen personally folded his laundry and stored them away. Then he went outside and had someone fetch water for him. Your Highness, said Qi Yunruo. What is it? Qi Yunruo looked at Li Chen and slowly said, Maybe it's because I've never had anything since young that I really want something now. It's not something others can give me. Rather, it's something that belonged to me in the first place. I should be able to get these things. Those things belong to me. Does your honored self understand what I'm saying? Li Chen sat across from him, poised to listen to him carefully. But when Qi Yunruo opened his mouth to say more, he didn't know where to start. Fury sparked in his heart, transforming from a small ember to a roaring flame. From the first day he had arrived at Count Ziang's estate, he learned that the existence of him and his mother brought the Qi family shame. Count Ziang was preposterous in his youth. He spent a fortune on Shui Ling Long. Because of this, the Qi family received a lot of criticism from the court. From a young age, Qi Yunruo no longer considered himself as a child of Qi Suxiao. He was all alone. He pretended that he was a guest of the estate. 
however, he had no one to rely on there. He could only watch with white eyes as they sent him to Prince Chun's estate. Why did Count Ziang's estate treat him like this? Your Highness, when I was very young I lived in a small house with my mother. I did not know I was a bastard. I only wondered why my father took so long to return home, Chi Yunruo's voice was light, he spoke softly back then, whenever Count Ziang would come, I felt like it was a holiday, ceremonious and happy. At that time, he had lifted me and smiled at me. He had also bought many novel playthings from the street for me. When I was learning how to write, he would sit behind me and teach me how to hold the brush. Chi Yunruo's expression was somewhat tinged with yearning. But such yearning disappeared in a flash. They all said that my mother and I owed Count Ziang's estate. But what exactly did we do wrong? Even if someone did make a mistake, it would be Count Ziang himself. It was he who did not care about the court's orders. It was he who ignored the rules of proprietary. It was he who broke the rules of the Qi family. Those things belonged to me. Those were the things my mother left behind for me. They don't have the right to take them. Qi Yunruo met Li Chen's gaze as if seeking for approval. Right? Your Highness, is it true that I can take back my things? They can't keep them away from me, right? It was at that moment that Li Chen understood. He leaned forward and wrapped his arms around Qi Yunruo reassuringly, hugging him to his chest. Qi Yunruo stubbornly lifted his head and asked, Is it true? Your Highness, I can take those things back. Li Chen looked at Qi Yunruo. His emotions grew complicated. Some things weren't as easily said as done. Little Qi wanted Count Ziang's estate to return his mother's belongings but Count Ziang's estate might not want to revisit what had occurred nine years ago. Moreover, if they had wanted to return the things, they would have done so already. Why would they change their mind from a few words from Little Chi? Not to mention, his identity was only the in-law of Count Ziang's household, and in some ways he shared a fate with them. But the moment Li Chen saw Little Qi gaze, full of panic and fragility but unparalleled in persistence, he nodded. Wait until we return to the capital. Then I will go with you to ask, all right. Qi Yunruo nodded a few pearls of tears tumbling from his eyes coupled with his low and dull voice, the whole sight pierced Li Chen's heart. After the first Pyrrhic victory, the Qiang people did not make any movement for many days. But who did not know that the Qiang people were merely preparing for an even larger assault? New Baiha and Bo 2 K ate a huge defeat. They would definitely plan to retaliate. In this period of strained peace, Li Chen trained his men and investigated the situation inside and outside Yushu Pass. Qi Yunruo accompanied Shui Yuan Yuan to the army clinic to help. He was very careful with his duties. He was patient and attentive. Because of certain considerations, the physician, Sir Lu, only had him make and deliver medicine. After a while, Sir Lu saw that Qi Yunruo and Chu Qing seemed familiar with one another and had him follow along when they sent people to the Chu family's clinic to check and confirm the medicine. Chi Yunruo found the days passing quicker now that he had something to occupy his time. However, the more quiet it was at Yushu Pass entrance, the more anxious the people became. Li Chen did not return even late into the night. Chi Yunruo waited and waited. He lay in bed, exhaustion seeping into his bones. After waking from a short nap, he realized that Li Chen still had not returned. And the lights of the leading general's tent were still bright. From the start of their journey to the border until now, twenty days had passed. There had only been one battle to secure the pass. This victory gave some people confidence. Every day, Zhao Weidu would hear someone saying they wanted to lead troops to battle and exterminate the Qiang people. However, whether it was Zhao Weidu or Li Chen, None of them were sufficiently prepared nor did they want to hastily launch an attack. Zhao Weidu loathed the spies in Yushu Pass. Li Chen also thought that it was better to catch all the spies first before going out to battle. When Li Chen finally returned to his quarters, it was already midnight. Qi Yunruo noticed that his expression wasn't good. Worried, he asked, 
Your Highness, what happened? Are your honored self's injuries hurting again? Li Chen hesitated, before saying, the memorial we sent to the court when we were at Hiluo County should have returned by now. But these past few days, the capital still did not have any news. Qi Yunruo said, maybe this matter isn't urgent in their eyes. Therefore, the court did not rush their steeds to send a reply. However, Li Chen's deep worry was evident from the furrowing of his brow. What did you do today? Qi Yunruo smiled. I went to the Chu family's clinic. Guard Captain Chu accompanied me there. I'm not familiar with medicine, and only weighed and measured the medicine. Sir Lu said he would inform the court the merits of the Chu family in the future, and ask the court to reward them. Li Chen smiled. That old fox of the Chu family. Your honored self knows Guard Chu's grandfather, asked Qi Yunruo curiously. Li Chen said, I can't be considered to know him. But that old man would never do a losing business. After speaking a little, Li Chen no longer felt as gloomy. He smiled. It's late. Enough talking. Let's rest, since we still have a lot of things to do tomorrow. All right. The next day, they did not need to pay the Chu family's clinic a visit. Li Chen received a letter from his estate. After he read through it, gloom settled in his heart once more. Then he went to train with the troops. He trained more desperately than usual. Come noon, Qi Yunruo did not wait for Li Chen to return for lunch. He caught a few glimpses of Li Chen training at the training grounds. Then he returned to his quarters. While at the Chu family's clinic, Qi Yunruo finished recording the items with his heart not in with his was doing. As he lifted his head, he felt the physician's gaze. So he looked back down. What was it? Qi Yunruo frowned. He put away the account book, turned around, and bumped into the physician's staff, scaring the staff member. He looked at Qi Yunruo and then ran away. As he was leaving the Chu family's clinic, he realized there were more people there than yesterday. Although some of their gazes were very veiled, it was still clear they were sneaking glances at Qi Yunruo. Some of their gazes directly carried contempt and disgust. After glaring at him impolitely, they walked away. Qi Yunruo felt flustered. But he quickly calmed down. Today, he and the other staff from the army clinic left the Chu family's clinic together. Chu Qing had stayed behind at the army encampment. Qi Yunruo boarded the carriage and returned there. As soon as he had arrived at the entrance, he ran inside. But Li Chen was not there. He did not know his whereabouts either. Later that afternoon, Qi Yunruo finally knew the cause of the strange occurrences. He was startled. Bad rumors regarding Li Chen and him had spread through Yushu Pass. Within his quarters, Qi Yunruo was furious to the point of shaking. His Highness had clearly gotten injured by protecting the pass. But in just one day, everyone in Yushu Pass said that the prince was a lecherous and unprincipled person. That he brought a male pet with him to the battlefield. That he only came to the border to gain military merit and seize the position of crowned prince. The first victory was not from his own hands. Rather, it was due to General Sita and General Zhuang Guanling. And the prince snatched all the credit. Someone even said that the prince had forcibly taken the military rations and harmed three counties, spending money with no regard for anything. Qi Yunruo believed someone was purposely spreading these bad and fraudulent rumors. But he did not know who could be so malicious. With Li Chen not around, Qi Yunruo had many things he could not figure out. He did not want to step foot outdoors. The rumors had come from the outside after all. Those in the encampment who knew of his existence were few. However, now almost everyone knew he was here. Qi Yunruo was not afraid of those eyes. But he was afraid that he would bring the prince more censure. This time, Li Chen took a long while before returning. Qi Yunruo looked at him and rose to his feet in a hurry. Li Chen removed his outer robes and threw them aside. He casually asked, What's wrong? In Qi Yunruo's eyes, Li Chen's expression seemed normal. Qi Yunruo said, 
I heard a lot of bad rumors about your highness. Ah. Li Chen sat down. I'm a little tired today. Little Chi, call someone to fetch me some hot water. I want to soak a bit and relieve my exhaustion. Looking back three times per step forward, Chi Yunruo made for the door. After he gave the order, he rushed back inside. Then he stared at Li Chen without even blinking. Li Chen laughed in spite of himself and told him he did a good job. Then he said, Don't worry. A frown slid its way across Qi Yunruo's lips. Does your honored self think it was the spies from the Qiang people who did this? They weren't able to defeat you in battle, so they ran a smear campaign instead. Perhaps they want the court to recall you? So that when your honored self is no longer here, they won't have to be afraid anymore and try to invade again. Li Chen fell silent. Then he asked, Is this the conclusion you came up with? Qi Yunruo nodded. Li Chen lightly sighed. Perhaps it is as how you've said it. Or, it might be someone else behind it. But these matters aren't important. A false reputation is not important. The court would not immediately recall me because of these groundless accusations. Wouldn't that just be confirming those rumors? Again, Qi Yunruo nodded, but he could not conceal the worry from his eyes. In reality, the spies of Xinyuan country had spread those rumors. Apart from what Qi Yunruo had said, there was another even more direct reason. Prince Chun's arrival at Yushu Pass inspired much hope in the troops. If the Qiang people wanted to launch another invasion of Yushu Pass, they must destroy the morale of Yushu Pass. If Prince Chun no longer possessed his prestige, then even if he were to personally lead troops to battle again, it would not have much effect. The letter Li Chen received was sent by Li Zihoki, one of his advisors from the prince estate. Those rumors had also appeared in the capital. They seemed to have been spread earlier than the ones in Yushu Pass. In fact, the rumors from the capital seemed to have been spread right after their victory. They said that Li Chen even brought a lover to the battlefield with him. Playing with a male pet all the way to the border. Not only that, but he let his male pet listen into the important matters of the military. After Li Chen's victory reached the capital, though, these rumors lessened a bit. Yet after a long time had passed without the army leaving Yushu Pass for battle, those rumors once more appeared. Once the imperial censors heard these rumors, they censured Li Chen again. It was unclear who started it. The memorials censuring Li Chen were like countless snowflakes tumbling from the sky. For this reason, Li Chen was currently accused of two wrongs. One, he did not lead the troops out. Two, he brought a male pet into the army. After Li Chen received the letter, he had been training his men for many days in a row. Each time, he returned to his quarters late at night. When Qi Yunruo saw his exhausted face, sadness enveloped him. If only he could do something for his highness. So that his highness would not be so tired. The capital, Prince Chun's estate. Qi Nikan's second pregnancy was difficult. She threw up every day and was unable to eat. Then Qi Yunchen brought her some bad news. After Qi Nikan heard it, her face turned a metallic green. She gritted her teeth. Cheap thing. If this affects his highness reputation, I'll want him dead when he's back. Qi Yunchen said, the memorial censuring his highness from the imperial censors has already reached his majesty. Who knows how his majesty would react to this. Qi Nikan blurted, elder brother, return, and let father know. Have father write a different memorial and push all the blame onto Qi Yunruo. We mustn't have His Majesty form a bad opinion on His Highness. Qi Yunchen didn't comment for a while. Then he said, Mother also has this idea. However, Father seems to be hesitant on doing this. Why not? Don't tell me Father wants to watch as this cheap thing drags His Highness underwater. Wait for His Majesty's reaction tomorrow, said Qi Yunchen. No matter what, I don't think His Majesty would recall His Highness to the capital. Once His Highness wins the war, His Majesty will wipe clean the smears. The fire in Chi Nikan's heart grew smaller. 
Does elder brother know who is trying to cause trouble for Prince Chun's estate? The Yuan family. And I have also found some faint clues pointing toward Prince Jing. Su so Zhao's Hiluo County Magistrate also sent a memorial that his county had no grain and that Prince Chun used two other counties to force him to give their last reserves. And so on. I discovered that a few years ago, Hiluo County's magistrate was someone belonging to Prince Jing. Chi Nikan thought that Li Chen was in fact the most likely to be conferred the title of Crown Prince. Prince Jing and Prince Qing were definitely scheming. She furrowed her brows and said, I will enter the palace tomorrow to see Her Majesty, the Empress. He is her full-blooded son. Her Majesty will definitely know what to do. Qi Yunchen nodded. End chapter.